So pituitary adenoma is a benign tumor of the anterior pituitary gland. And this tumor arises from one of the five major cells, cell types in the anterior pituitary gland. And we said that the anterior pituitary gland makes all these hormones, LH, FSH, GH, uh, ACTH, what else, what else we have here, TSH, prolactin. And the anterior pituitary gland has cells that makes each of these. Okay, and there's five different cells you want to be aware of. There's lactotrophs, and then there's five because there's one, two, three, four, and then there's one cell that makes both of these, so that's five. Okay. Lactotrophs makes prolactin, thyrotrophs makes th TSH, corticotrophs makes ACTH, Gona um, let's see, what else? Somatotrophs makes GH. And then finally, gonadotrophs makes LH. You don't even have to memorize. You don't have to memorize that. I mean, you can, they all pretty much make sense. Lactotrophs because prolactin makes milk. Uh, thyrotrophs, the corticotropes, the gonadotropes, gonadotropin, gonadotropin releasing hormone. The the only one really hard to remember is somato somatotrophs. Okay. All right. So, what are the clinical features of a pituitary adenoma? One, mass effect symptoms. So because it's going to cause compression, and it's going to just be a tumor in your brain. Remember, the pituitary is in the brain. And so that's mass effect symptoms. The other thing it can do is it can cause symptoms from over-secretion of these anterior pituitary hormones. Because you get, it's, remember, it's an overgrowth of the cells that make each of these hormones. So if you have too much of those cells, you're going to get too much of this hormone production, and you get symptoms from that. And finally, you can have, this is a mass effect pretty much thing, you can have decreased pituitary function if you're compressing normal tissue. So you have your normal pituitary, and you get this big tumor here, and it's compressing on all this, the rest of this tissue, and it's going to cause compression, and so this tissue is not going to work very well, and then those cells are, gonna, are not going to make hormones, and then you're going to have a problem with too little hormones of just different types. So... Let's talk about mass effect a little bit more. So mass effect symptoms include, one is headache. Okay, you just again, you have a mass in here. So that's gonna hurt your head. And then the other one is bitemporal hemianopsia. And why is that? This is our pituitary gland we see here. And this is our optic chiasm right here, right here. Okay, if you have our tumor here, it's gonna get compression of the optic chiasm which this is a different view. And in neural lectures, we talked about this. Remember, the optic chiasm, if you compression here, you're going to impede crossing of these tracks. Remember that stuff from the outside is going to come here. Stuff from the outside comes here. And normally it crosses. But if you have a compression and you have a mass that's Messing up your optic chiasm, that's not going to happen. So you're not going to see this outside half of the world or this outside half of the world. Okay, And that's what bitemporal hemianopsia means. Again, all you see is the inside half of the world because the outside half can't cross. So it's not getting to your brain. So that's bitemporal hemianopsia. It's classic for a pituitary adenoma that's compressing the optic chiasm. So that's mass effect symptoms. Headache bitemporal hemianopsia, and now let's talk about symptoms from over-secretion. So we said lactotrophs is from too much prolactin secretion. So prolactin, we want to think about men and women. In women, what's going to happen? What, do we, what is the prolactin direct effect? Remember, prolactin stimulates the breast to create milk, so you're going to have too much milk production in women. And what, what is the other thing that it does? Prolactin blocks GnRH release. So if you block GnRH release, you're going to get amenorrhea, you're going to get decreased estrogen, you're going to get decreased bone density. In males, again, you get blocked GnRH release, so you have decreased testosterone, because testosterone is also from the axis. You're going to get hypogonadism, you're going to get infertility. Hypogonadism is erectile dysfunction, decreased libido, all from decreased testosterone. Okay. Decreased testosterone in men, decreased estrogen in women, you get amenorrhea, and you also get galacteria. Galacteria is our fancy term for too much milk release from direct prolactin stimulation. Next is somatotrophs. Remember we said somatotrophs is what makes growth hormones. 
We're going to talk about this in a second, but too much of this, you get acromeg acromegaly in adults, you get gigantism in women. Remember, so growth hormone obviously stimulates growth. The reason why there's two is gigantism is makes like just huge guys. Just think like Yao Ming, think Andre the Giant. That's gigantism. They're, they're taller than normal. They have these extra facial features. If you have too much growth hormone in an adult, you're not going to get increased height because your growth plates have already closed by then. But you do you get some enlargement of some features, including the face and the hand. So that's acromegaly. We're going to talk about that in a second. Next is the corticotrophs that make ACTH. Remember, what is ACT, where does ACTH go and what does it stimulate? It stimulates the adrenal glands to make cortisol. If you get too much cortisol, you're going to get something called Cushing syndrome. We're going to talk all about that later. That's pretty high yield. Thyrotrophs makes TSH. What does that stimulate? It stimulates the thyroid to make thyroid hormones. If you get too much of it, you get something called hyperthyroidism. We're going to talk about that. Finally, we have gonadotropes, of LH, FSH. And these usually don't overproduce hormones. So a tumor, a, a gonadotrope tumor doesn't overproduce these hormones. So you're only going to get mass effect. So what were the mass effect symptoms? Again, remember we can get headache. You can get by temporal hemianopsia. So I want to emphasize though, you can get... Gonadotroph tumors only present with mass effect, but these can all also present, present with mass, mass effect in addition to all these other symptoms and these syndromes that we've just talked about. So let's focus. We're going to talk about this and this in their own lecture. So in their own lecture, in their own section, let's talk a brief talk about these and this. So prolactinoma, we just said, was a pituitary adenoma with overgrowth of prolactin-secreting lactotroph cells. So I already told you the symptoms. What are the symptoms? Remember, you either get, we were, we were just talked about this, direct overstimulation of milk production in females, that's galacteria, or you get, what is the other thing you get? You get inhibition of GnRH release, release and production, production and release. So what's going to happen to a woman? This is just a brief overview of what we just talked about. You get decreased estrogen leading to amenorrhea. You get decreased fol follicle stimulation. You get amenorrhea. You get decreased bone density. And then for males, you get infertility, you get hypogonadism, you get impotence, you get decreased libido, all that, just decreased testosterone. And so you don't have to remember all those words I'm telling you, I'm just telling you, decreased testosterone is going to lead to all those problems. So now acromegaly, we just said this is from too much growth hormone in adults, and it's usually from a pituitary adenoma, okay? And so what's going to happen? You're going to get, growth hormone causes growth, but in for adults, Growth plates are closed, so what's going to happen? You get an enlarged head, you enlarged hands, enlarged feet. This is what you see. This guy is, look at his hands, it's huge. Okay. And the clinical story, they're not going to tell you that their hands or their feet are bigger. They're going to tell you that their hat doesn't fit as well as before, their shoes don't fit as well as before, or their rings don't fit. Actually, that's, and that's the best way you can ask them. That's the best way you can tell. If the ring doesn't fit as well as before, it's, it's not subjective. It's, you, then obviously then the hand must have gotten bigger because that ring again is smaller, okay? You're going to get coarsening of facial features. And then remember we said that growth hormone causes insulin resistance. Remember, growth hormone stimulates growth through IGF made in the liver, but also has direct effects on cells to cause insulin resistance. And finally, you can get the mass effect symptoms. Just to draw into your head again, what were the mass effect symptoms? Headache, bitemporal hemi, and hemianopsia, okay? Now, how do we diagnose this? What, what do we just say? What lab value can we test? When we say growth hormone stimulates IGF production, IGF-1, so you can get too much IGF production. And what another test you can do is a glucose tolerance test. And what you would expect is you expect you give them glucose, you would expect suppression of GH. If that doesn't happen, then that's positive for acromegaly from too much growth hormone. So in that case, you have too much, some, you're making too much growth hormone. So even if you give glucose, you're not going to decrease that amount. The treatment here is simple. You take out that tumor and problem solved. However, if you can't take out the tumor or your surgery doesn't work, then you got to do, you have multiple options. You have octreotide, which we're going to talk about a lot. Octreotide is a somatostatin analog. We're going to somatostopin. Reduces hormone release. So that helps. You can get pegvisumab. This is a growth hormone receptor blocker. So even though you have so you have too much growth hormone, but you block all the receptors for it, so it doesn't work. Or you get dopamine agonists. Okay, so those are all options. Octreotide, pegvisumab, dopamine agonists. So that is it for our pituitary adenomas.